Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. What we're going to be talking about today are 10 different projects that you guys can build, whether you're just learning how to code or you want to become a full-time software developer and try to like transition. I think that these 10 projects that we're going to be talking about today kind of cover a wide variety of different topics and different technologies. And so building all of these will give you a lot of experience in certain different niche areas that I think, you know, overall will make you a better programmer. This is in no particular order, so you can build, you know, whichever ones you want. And you can also iterate on these projects. You can add things or remove them. These are just ideas. If you're new to the channel, my name is John Vine. And what we do here is we talk about software engineering. And I try to give you guys tips from my experience so that you can achieve your goals of becoming full-time software developers as well. If you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. It greatly helps. And I think around 90% of the people that watch this channel right now aren't actually subscribed. So guys, if you're watching right now, hit the subscribe button and also give it a like. It really helps the video. So guys, the first project I wanted to talk about is a very simple project. It's a simple form where you can register, you can log in, you can log out and you can sign up, right? So what this does is basically gives you experience kind of built using forms. Forms are on any type of website, right? At where you have to enter data, right? Enter a username, enter a password, and then click submit. And then it kind of hits an endpoint somewhere in, you know, in some server, in some backend server, and then, you know, authenticates you and then lets you go through uh, to the website, right? So building a, a kind of registration, sign up, login form that kind of gives you access to a blank website, for example, or it's your portfolio, whatever you want to do it. I think that's a great, great experience to have. And what I'm talking about is, you know, logging in. So, you know, you'll have to keep track of existing users or if you want to, you know, let them log in using like Google authentication. That's an other, that's another kind of strategy to go about, right? Then you don't have to keep track of passwords. You just have to authenticate them using Google's third party API. You also want to want to have like errors for incorrect logins or, you know, incorrect email, incorrect passwords. You want to have uh, password limitations. So you want to have like a minimum eight, eight letters and special characters. So there's a lot of different things to think about. It might seem simple uh, from the get go, but there's a lot of little things. And at the end of it, you'll you'll really have experience and you'll have successfully built a part of a website that you're always going to have to build if you're building a website, right? You're always going to have to build some sort of form where someone has to put text in. So I think um, a registration form is a great uh, project to do. It might not be the biggest project, but it's very useful. Another awesome project that I've seen, you know, a couple of people do is a content aggregator. So you grab you grab content from different um, different social media channels. So like YouTube videos, uh, tweets, what else is there? Instagram posts, you know, um, can't come up with anything else right now. But basically you grab content from a ton of different websites and aggregate them together into one place. Right. So this is an awesome project. It's a lot of fun and you can you get experience using third party APIs. Right. So using Twitter's API, using Instagram's API, using YouTube's API to pull data, pull videos and posts and then post them. It also gives you experience like, you know, on the front end, um, displaying the actual pictures and videos. And so there's a lot of different things that, that are involved in this project. And, you know, I just think it can be useful uh, for your own personal life, right? Like you can add people that uh, whose tweets you follow or channels and then kind of everything in one place. One, one way of thinking of ideas, if you can't come up with any ideas yourself, that uh, one, one way of coming up with ideas that I like is to, you know, try to solve a problem in your life and turn that into a side project. You know, why not? Anything can really be like solved with code. So it could be a good strategy if there's something in your life that can be solved with code to actually build a project. Another awesome project to build and a great thing to practice is to implement caching on a website and implement persistent data. So if you build a normal website, let's say a React website, if you watched um, my tutorial last week on building a um, React to-do list, you, what we talked about was persistent data. Right. So in, in the tutorial that I built, it was a very simple implementation. And so it didn't have persistent data. So what would happen if you refresh would be that all the data would reset and everything's gone. Right. But obviously these days, all websites are built with persistent data with caching. So if you can implement something like that, where not only if you refresh, then uh, the data stays there. But if you leave the website and you come back or if you are offline, and you're on the website, everything is still there, right? That's called caching, where you take information that the user provides and you kind of store it on your end. And so when they come back, you kind of ma you ma match up the data with the user and then you kind of choose what to display, right? So caching and persistent data 
you know, are always um, are definitely necessary if you want to be a web developer today, if you want to be like a freelancer and you want to build websites for people. These are definitely things you're going to have to add anyways. So it really gives you a lot of very valuable experience and uh, build, build some very valuable skills. Another great side project that might seem pretty obvious, but not a lot of people have is just building your own personal portfolio. I'm talking from scratch, you build the front end and you kind of just practice building a simple website it could be a react a, like a one single page application but whatever it may be you want to be able to you know like connect to your github connect to your twitter instagram uh youtube channel whatever you want whatever social media you have you want to be able to display you know side projects be able to link to them um you might want to do some you know gathering emails so at the bottom people can put their email in and then you can send them stuff you know, there's a ton of different things you can do with a personal blog portfolio, but you know, at the end of the day, what it does is it showcases your abilities. And I think that every developer should have one. I'm in the process of building one right now. And so um, it's just, you know, it lets you practice, it builds your skills. And then at the end of the day, you have a place where you can show off your skills. So I think it's a win-win uh, either way. Now the fifth and one of the most important uh, things you should practice and projects you should build is implementing a database and implementing a backend, right? In my experience, you know, when I was learning how to code, I would, I, I kind of, the first experience I got was with React. And then in a later internship, I started working with Node and a, and a backend and a database. That's really all you need to know to build a product, right? You need the front end, the back end, and then a database. And then you kind of have a working product. You just need to deploy it to like a cloud server somewhere and then you have it working. So if you can practice building a backend in a database, that really gives you all like a lot of very valuable knowledge and a very, um, you know, very practical real world knowledge that you're probably going to use at a full time job. One of the most challenging things when I was learning how to code was, OK, I have this kind of simple website. Now what? Right now, how do I connect it to a backend and make it do things right? Backend and databases are really your um, if you haven't really delved into them, it's really the meat of it, it, it can it can really be the meat of what coding is, right? There's a lot of things. It's very tricky, and I just think think it gives you a lot of valuable experience. I think um, practicing with SQL, you know, if you're making a database, if you're creating tables, and you know, establishing relationships, uh, that's a lot of super awesome, super valuable knowledge to have as a developer. That's really um, that's really important to have, right? It's not just about coding; it's about knowing how databases work and stuff like that. So yeah, implementing a backend to end a database to any kind of project you have is definitely something you guys should do, right? Not a lot of things, not a lot of, not all of these things are their own projects, right? It's ideas that you can add to an existing project. So the next project idea I have for you guys is to build a blog where you post weekly or um, daily, whatever you want, and then add like, you know, a newsletter where it's, it sends people an email every week. I think this is an awesome little project um, that helps you, you know, again, practice your front end skills, building a nice website. And then, um, you know, also you're going to have to have a database where you store or some kind of local storage where all the um, blog posts are stored, right? And maybe pictures, different texts, fonts, stuff like that. And um, at this point, you might want to add like a like or comment a bit, uh, functionality as well. I'll leave that up to you guys. But, you know, there's definitely different ideas that you can add and remove. Uh, to a blog, right? If you have a blog post, you might want people to like and comment on it. Um, this also gives you a chance to practice with some backend stuff, right? You know, setting up like maybe SendGrid to send people emails. You know, you want to collect people's emails and then maybe run a, run a cron job to send it to them. Who knows? There's a lot of different ways to implement it. And that's the beauty of it, right? Whatever, whichever way you select it, it'll give you some, some great practice. And at the end of the day, you'll have an awesome blog. Now, these next couple of projects are a bit bigger in scope. And I would recommend these for, you know, people that are more intermediate or advanced. Um, I just think they're, you know, just a bit bigger and more difficult and will probably introduce a lot more problems to, to you if you try to build them. So the first one is a clone for Zillow, right? Or Airbnb or one of those websites. I just think that all the, these websites have a lot of very uh, interesting functionality. There's a lot of different components that you're working with, right? Like a big map and then on the side you have... Uh, a list of all the of all the listings so different houses apartments and prices and there's a lot of data you're showing there's a lot of filtering that you're doing right you can filter on apartments or number of rooms number of bathrooms um, there's just a lot of different data and it's just a great great project that you can slowly iterate on right at first you can just show a map and all the houses you don't even have to show price and then you can slowly add on and build until you have a, a working clone of this kind of app and again it gives you 
Uh, maybe there's third-party APIs that give you, you know, home real estate data. There's a lot of different cool things that you can do and you can also work with pagination. So uh, kind of a project like an Airbnb clone or a Zillow clone, definitely for someone that's more experienced, but it's for sure an awesome project to build. So the next one is kind of a curveball. It's to build an e-commerce store. Now hear me out, there's not gonna be a lot of coding involved or there might be uh, depending on how much you want. But these days I think a lot of what being a coder is, is the ability to use you know, third party services to build a product, right? So for example, if you're code, if you're building a store that sells shirts, you know, you might need a, re, um, a place to design it, a place that will supply them. Then you might need like a third party API like Stripe to sell it. And then you also need to market it. So it kind of gives you a lot of the knowledge that you're going to need to really succeed as a software developer, especially if you want to start your own business. Building an e-commerce store kind of gives you a lot of knowledge. Um, that you won't really get if you're just coding, right? It'll give you that other knowledge, like the marketing, like the um, building relationships with vendors and all that kind of stuff. So I just think this could be a, a pretty useful um, project for a, a software developer. The next one is one I've seen online as well, and it's a bug tracker. So basically something like Jira or Asana, where you can go on and kind of file a bug, um, write a description of what it is, and then assign it to someone else. And then that person kind of gets it and they can change the status from, let's say, um, to do, to in progress, to complete. And then basically there's a record of, of tasks and of bugs that were solved. Um, I think this is a great project. I think it gives you great practice with JavaScript, with, with a lot of front end um, data processing and just reiterating the stuff I said before. I think it's a fun project to work on and it's a pretty valuable part of the um, experience of being a software developer, right? You're going to be using these bug tracking tools and um, if you can build your own, it'll just, it'll just be an interesting experience to build your own and compare it to what you'll be using full time. And I think it'll show recruiters that you can build complicated projects that are relevant. And finally, the last project that I would recommend you guys work on is build a, some sort of video game. My recommendation is to build Tetris. But you guys can really build whatever you want, like Brick Breaker or just some kind of simple um, old school retro game, you know, um, maybe Pong or Frogger, something that's super basic though, which is with a couple of keystrokes or something. I just think that uh, video game development is a completely different ball game. You have to worry about completely different things. You're not worried about, you know, uh, hitting an endpoint and showing data, right? You're worried about making something move uh, in a certain way or in Tetris, let's say, you have to worry about it falling a certain way. So there's really uh, completely different things you have to think about, right? There's gravity, there's collision detection, there's uh, keystrokes. You also have to think about how, like how do you even draw the different, the, the different shapes and on all that kind of stuff. And you can also introduce, you know, object oriented programming. So building a video game is definitely a completely different beast in and of itself. And if you're up for it, there's you, the, the good the good thing is is that you can build video games in a multitude of different languages so you can probably uh, build it using one language you already know and you know it's fun you can play with your friends right so guys I hope you have enjoyed this video uh, these are 10 projects that I think cover a lot of different topics and if you can build a couple of these maybe I've inspired you to build a couple then that's awesome I think these are great projects for you and whatever, whichever one you decide to work on will give you some experience in a different kind of niche um, technology or niche part of programming that ultimately I think you will be using when you become a full-time developer. So guys, if you like the content, don't forget to uh, hit the like button uh, and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below if you think there's anything I missed, anything you want to add to the conversation. I always appreciate it and I will answer everyone. As always guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Take it easy and have a good day. Peace out.